Hi, my name is Sonia Stark uh, and I am um, a real estate developer uh, at the Real Estate Administration in the city of Stockholm uh, since a year and a half. The city of Stockholm follows the 1% rule and I thought you were translating it. <laughs> oh, sorry. No. No, that's good. And uh, the one, <laughs> exactly. The one percent rule in Stockholm is managed by Stockholm Konst, and uh, currently there are about 80 uh, art projects running. And I myself are going to start up two projects this year. Um, and the number of um, started projects every year has been increasing uh, since the when they when this Stockholm Council was founded in 2008. Um, the number of, uh, let's see, the, the investment each year can vary very much depending on what kind of projects you have. Some of them are really large and some are really small. I think the, the smallest project uh, amounts up to 69,000 Swedish crowns and the largest is about 20 million Swedish crowns, so it's a very diverse a big diversity. In my previous job, uh, I worked as a, a commercial developer at Koe Fastheater, a real estate company owned by the Swedish Corporation. Koe Fastheater owns larger retail parks in the outskirts, mainly in the outskirts of uh, major cities in Sweden. And I had the pleasure to work with the planning and construction of uh, the shopping center Bromma Blocks. A former hangar at Bromma Airport from 1940, in the 1940s, and we developed, which we developed into 26,000 square meter visible area. The planning of the shopping center started in the year 2006 and it opened in 2010. And the year after, it was awarded the Retail Award and was appointed the best shopping centre in Sweden. And in order to create the concept for the shopping centre, um, we made a great deal of investigations and inquiries and in, in depth interviews with the target group in the catchment area. The target group turned out to have the strongest uh, spending power in Sweden and could be described as early adopters with high expectations. They rather shopped in the city than in, uh, in a shopping center and they had international references as they used to travel a lot and they uh, shopped abroad and on the internet. They liked to feel unique and expressed clearly that they did not want another uniform shopping center that looked the same and had the same content as everybody else on the market. So to be able to succeed with the project financially and to withstand the, the competition on the market, we decided to build a different, unique and inspirational shopping center with lots of innovations that would appeal to all senses. We wanted this shopping center to become a meeting place and uh, to make it feel like a second living room where visitors would, which visitors would enjoy so much that they would stay there longer than normal and, and also, which also would benefit the stores. The concept was met, um, based on four cornerstones. In order to satisfy our choosy target group, we needed to create a modern interior in a historical environment. To meet up with our high interest in, in new technologies, we also decided to focus on implementing new and modern technology. And as the target group also had an interest in art and design, and considered themselves to have uh, a sense of what good taste is. We invested in art and design, and in fact, the, uh, the total artwork amounted to 1.3% of the 
total construction cost. So in order to succeed, we also had to supply the right mix of stores and restaurants and great service, like a welcoming environment with uh, clean toilets, for example, that were free of charge and uh, lots of lounge areas and uh, a well lit up garage. And I would say this part is really the most crucial part because you, you have to have a if you don't have the right mix of stores, then you, then, then you, don't, you don't get the income you need. So that's the crucial part, really. But today I will describe the first three uh, cornerstones more in detail. You're welcome to ask anything if you're any time if you wonder, wonder anything. Yeah, I have a question. Okay. You, you have to think about it until later. What is good taste? Yes. <laughs> good question. Okay. In the listed old hangar, and uh, it's actually this one up here, it's called Hangar 3. Um, it was more or less like a giant shoebox with just one pillar. Our architects created a modern environment interior with several different store types that could be transformed over time. Many old details in the hangar were preserved due to historical values, but also in order to, to create um, or add some industrial charm and authenticity to the, to the environment. When it comes to new technologies, we plan 20 digital screens or signs uh, at the escalators over there, and a giant projection of 22 uh, times 7 meter uh, on the building's facade, made of two high definition uh, cinema projectors. We installed digital information stations indoors and outdoors, which was quite new at the time, especially in this climate. <laughs> and, um, and we also had installed sound experiences in order to surprise and create the right atmosphere. Several light installations um, were also installed that could change color depending on campaigns. And finally, we mounted a digital driving wall, which you can see down there in blue, for children of all ages. During the 1950s, the Swedish corporation had an explicit strategy uh, that every newly constructed Dolmus department store had to include artistic decorations in order to develop a good taste in ordinary people. <laughs> Even though this strategy no longer existed when I worked there, art came to play a major role in the making of this shopping center. This is a Dolmus department store from Umeå. In what year? 1950 yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, is, is uh, Bromma Blocks is it, uh, still owned by QF? Uh, not today. It was sold in uh, November to um, an American investment fund, so something like that. In cooperation with our architect and design bureau. We decided on an early stage where the best locations for artwork would be in the building. You see the orange dots here. For example, we wanted a water sculpture uh, in a spiral staircase, which was over here. Um, and we wanted it to bring a sense of con uh, contemplation and tranquility to the center. And the 12 meter high sculpture called Cold Stream was later on created by the British uh, artist William Pye. We also planned three chandeliers. I can go back here. Which we, and the escalators, which are here, here, and there. And 
and they would uh, contribute to a beautiful and inspirational light and decoration. And uh, these were made by or designed by the uh, Swedish glass artist Inia Droma. Mm -hmm. But some craftsmen designed, produced them later on. So she made the design and, and, uh, and we uh, managed the production. The third artwork, see if there are the, the, the chandeliers. The third artwork was a meeting place outdoors, which we wanted to be in an organic form uh, to make a contrast to all the square buildings and concrete. The Swedish architect and designer Thomas Sandell created these artworks called Hales, you can see part of it there. Uh, and the work also had a function as a place to sit on and for children to climb on, and it also contained the only tree in the whole area. It's a cherry tree. <laughs> Finally, we've made space for some contemporary art in these portals that were on the basement level and situated between the stores in some sort of pass passages. And these were made so you can dismount the walls inside and put up temporary art. And we also had sensors for, for sound experiences so you can make. And we have seven of these in the basement floor, so you can make some sort of art exhibitions. And it's all had to do to, to create something new, something different, and, well, and offer stimulating <coughs> experiences. Experience. Saying that so much. <laughs> it's almost yeah. every time it's the same as Swedish. Yeah. Well, um, finally, all the, all the furniture in the center was chosen carefully to suit the brand and identity of Roma blocks and was made of Swedish or, or Italian design in high quality. We made this choice because we thought visitors would be more careful uh, with the furniture if they were, were of better quality and chosen with care, and which also proved to be right. And characteristic for, for these artworks, you could say, uh, was that they, besides being decorative and inspirational, they also had to have a function. The light, and you had to sit on, or you could even touch the water, or so, uh, get calmed by the water, the sound of the water. Um, and they should also be easy to maintain, maintain so the maintenance aspect, and, environmental issues were also uh, taken care of in the process. 